Yeah, well, I'm probably not going to use that a lot. Okay. So the saber saw obviously goes back and forward. Yeah. That's really nasty on the frame, right? So because it's going back and forward, there's a good chance it itself will cause splitting and delamination. Even if we do see some delamination on the edge of the cut, let's not immediately jump to conclusion yeah. that it's Giant's fault. I like the angle grinder much better because it's less aggressive and she just cuts. And the first thing I'm going to do is chop the bit off I want. <laughs> Yeah. We can do that, no problem. It'll just cost you more than you paid for the frame. <laughs> and did you mention this is not sponsored by Giant? Yeah, not sponsored. <laughs> we shall commence. Can you confirm this is a new frame? Uh, this is a brand new frame, but it's on clearance, yeah. Yeah, you're paying the full discounted price. It was $4,500. It's now on special at $2,499. It's still the current platform, but it is a couple of years old. And the colour is probably hasn't been received. Like Most people want carbon stealth black. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, no idea. Okay. What, what are you doing with it? I'm taking it to Gary's and we're going to saw it right, right open and see sort of what it looks like inside. Really? <laughs> really? Yeah. Do you... Do you, <laughs> do you, is it, do you want to ride it first? Is it, is it, do you want a warranty frame to do that instead? Like, do you want something that's been damaged rather than no, having no, to pay to for something? Brand new. It has, has to be, be brand new. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're not a wasteful company, right? We don't want to... It does take the company hours. Like, they're all hand-built. There's a lot of people involved to build a frame and get it here. Like, it's, uh, about this. But, man, it's your money. You, you can do what you want with it. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, but that's, uh, that's not... Yeah, it's not, that's not normal. <laughs> <laughs> that's... Uh, that's uh, episode of Hambini Reams, a special one. I've been contracted for the large sum of fucking zero to comment on this. Right, the only thing that is giant around here is my fucking pen. By Hambini, age five, you could check me out on the internet. Before we get back to Hambini, I wanted to cut in here quickly and let you know that I will be explaining the motivation behind this project at the end of the video. And of course, projects like this could not be possible without having channel partners. So I wanted to thank HVMN for their support and their product Ketone IQ, which you cannot deny, raises blood ketone levels to a similar level as if you had been fasting for several days. And if you can raise blood ketone levels strategically via research, it has been proven to enhance cognitive function, aid recovery, and improve endurance performance. If you would like to try Ketone IQ yourself, please check out the channel discount code below. Right, so I'm basically Australian in all but accent, can you tell? Right, enough of the looning around. Here is the frame pictures that Cam sent me. The giant frame is a typical manufacturing process in the sense that it's made in multiple pieces. Uh, then we come on to the headset. Not much to report in here. Normally around, oh, where's the fucking pen? Here you get some small like holes and imperfections is because you've got a non-uniform cross section. There's not really anything there. You know, I would say that was fairly cleanly made. There's plenty of meat around the seat. That's a decent seat. Um, okay, this bit's a bit scabby, but you know, I'm going looking for that. And also the, the seat around here obviously also looks quite good. Now, there is some layer shift in here. So if you look here, you see those, they look like little wrinkles. Now that can be one or two things. That can be air or, I mean, the, the adhesive is anaerobic, so it doesn't need air to, to function. It, you know, it doesn't give off bubbles. But if you get air trapped in there, that's one thing. The other thing is you can have a layer shift. So if you've got multiple layers of material, let's say the top layer was to shift and then bunch up and you'd end up with that. And that might be what that is. For this, I wouldn't say that's a, a huge deal. That looks like layer shift, possibly some air. I wouldn't really go fretting too much around that. This is the bottom bracket area. Now this, now initially when I looked at it, I thought, oh, it looks fairly clean, but it's actually, 
I wouldn't say it's that good. If you look here, this pen shit, we'll go back to the red one, right? Oh yeah, that's much better, much better pen. You can see that the wall thickness around the bottom bracket is not uniform and that is considered in the bearing world to be fairly poor engineering practice. If you have a look at some of the bottom brackets where someone's actually measured them correctly, they tend to be oval uh, on giant bikes and quite a few of them are undersized in one direction, so let's say in that direction, and then oversized in the other direction. It's probably due to, well, a number of factors, but this kind of like non-consistent, I mean, it's almost like a razor blade. It, it's just decaying from very thick to nothing. So you get inconsistent compression around the bearing. Now, some people will say, oh, that fucking Ambini is being pedantic. Well, you've spent four grand on a bike frame, you'd expect kind of like perfection. The other comment I would say is the way the rib nuts have been put in look to be very clean. So it looks like someone's reamed the hole out before putting the rib nut in because there's no real fraying around it. So that is good. This is not good. It's not, again, it's not a showstopper, but it's not good. So you've got the usual wrinkling around here. In here, where there's a joint, you can quite clearly see the voids. It does present a structural weakness, but the likelihood is, and looking at that, Giant have put more surface area in than they need. So there is a factor of safety to allow for the shite joint, let's say. I mean, it's not pretty, but it's just sort of air has been, it looks like it's entraining the adhesive. So they use the word bonding. I would probably call that glued. Some voids in there, in there, and in there. Doesn't look, I mean, the frame's not in front of me, so I can't tell for sure that it's not in the carbon. The voids sort of happen in clusters. And that is the other side of the headset. Uh, again, I mean, you'd say that looked fairly clean. I mean, this, I mean, it's not pretty. I wouldn't say that's the end of the world. Now this, just around here, they look like voids to me. And then this, I'm not sure what that is. That could be the layer shift. Uh, this is the bottom bracket. I mean, you can get a better appreciation of what I meant by the inconsistent cross sections. If you look there, it's quite thin. Here, you see how thick that is? And then that looks like a void. Might not be, just looks in the picture like a void. But then you go, I've been looking through the whole frame and not found that many voids. This is the bottom bracket and this looks like some voids. And this clearly hasn't been faced because you can see the, it looks like overspray. Now, if you did enjoy that presentation, remember to leave Camo a like and a stupid sexual innuendo for a comment and you can see we were fairly aggressive cutting it open and if you just have a look right along and you can follow my finger along there is no sign of delamination that i can see you know here are some voids in adhesive and things like that but again where? there it's just like the join the c-tube and this has been joined and there's voids from where the adhesive is yeah well it's not a carbon void so it's okay. maybe a bad choice of word but actually it's pretty <laughs> pretty good yeah look at look at that it's just a hundred percent you know there's no holes there's no voids there's nothing ordinarily i would expect to see some form of delamination through there just from how we cut it i was going to say there's some there but <laughs> it's a sticker mate all you all i've got here is admiration for how it's built cam all i can say is toyota boring but even from just cutting them open every time i've cut one open in the past i've always seen some delamination on the carbon and again mainly because of the aggression I've used in cutting it open, but this has survived with none. And I mean zero. So, you know, that's, I've never seen that before. And you know, like that's really nice manufacturing in there as well. You know, the, you know, the inside is dead smooth. Obviously you can see the increase in thickness of the wall around the brake, but even like most stays, you know, one and a half, two millimeters thick, and I haven't measured it, but that's every bit of two millimeter stick there, you know? And again, as I said, the only thing I think is shit about Giants is their paint. You know, like just looking at that paint is, it's too thick, there's too much paint on there, but they must have a reason because it certainly doesn't save many money or weight. And there's not too many more I've seen that are that neat inside, you know? And I knew that before I cut that open, you know? I've, I've repaired. You could have told me, mate. Yeah, <laughs> I tried. So what is the motivation behind all of this? Before I get into that, I did want to summarize what we've just seen because it was a lot at a high level and break it down into four parts. So as Gary puts it, we've got a Toyota quality frame here, which means it's not a premium quality frame, but good quality for the price. Now I took this frame in to see two expert mechanics that are involved in this channel too, Aaron Dobbs and Jay Taylor, and they were both aligned with Gary on physical inspection. Hambini, on the other hand says, 
I wouldn't say it's a good frame. The problem is the bar is set so low in the bike industry that this is at the better end of shot. So I guess we have in this video more of your hands-on day-to-day perspectives in carbon repair expert and bike mechanics versus the technical engineering side. To go a little bit deeper here on point number one, which was the joint area that both Gary and Hambini were discussing, the voids are definitely in the glue. This was confirmed by a second and close inspection from Aaron Dobbs after I received Hambini's video feedback. Does it matter that voids are in the glue? Well, apparently epoxy glue is about 10% of the strength of carbon fiber. So this is a weak point on the frame. And if you get voids in those areas, it becomes even weaker. But is the frame gonna snap there because of it? Extremely unlikely. Point number two is the bottom bracket internal area. Gary said this. Yeah, and if you wanted to go nuts, like people go nuts, you know, oh, the bottom bracket isn't finished perfectly and all that sort of stuff, but it's yeah. just, you know, like the back edge of the carbon finishing is not, you know, perfect. And Hambini said this. When you get to sort of that sort of size, which is like one mil, if that, it does make a difference. You'd say it was shit. So two different perspectives and the likelihood of having an issue with it is probably limited to, and this is according to Hambini, Poor bottom bracket bearing life, which someone would likely never know was down to the very thin bottom bracket sidewalls. Point number three is the layer shift Hambini discussed, which makes the frame less stiff and weaker, but according to Hambini, he would be amazed if anyone notices this while riding, unless they're a heavier rider or they tend to be a grinder versus spinning the pedals. And point number four, I did wanna make a point that Gary did his typical carbon wall scan and found only consistency in the carbon wall thickness and the fork on visual inspection. Have a look inside the steerer tube. The inside layer is twill carbon. I can't see anything other than carbon. Versus fiberglass as we've seen before and opened a whole can of worms. Yeah. And the same within this frame, there is no sign of fiberglass anywhere. And we thought we'd be good to the environment, or at least better to the environment, and keep this part alive. The only thing that Gary didn't like was the thickness of the paint, which is roughly double what you see on other bikes at circa 200 microns versus what you typically see of around circa 100 microns. So why do this to the poor giant? Well, under the last video we did at Carbon Steed, with the Els Falleth Evo, someone wrote a comment, can't help but wonder if mainstream carbon frames would also stand up to such scrutiny. I thought to myself, that's a very fair comment. So I rang up Gary and said, if I can get my hands on a discounted mainstream frame, can I bring it in and can we scrutinize it to even out all these emerging Chinese brands that I've brought you in recent times? And finally, why choose Giant? I'm sure some of you will be asking, why not pick on BMC, a company that say support this channel? Well. If I went down the BMC path, it's a fair old lose-lose because if it was, say, a good quality frame, there would be, I'm sure, a number of conspiracies saying the frame was hand-picked, it's all set up, and so forth. If it was poor quality, I would be without a bike partner moving forward, so that's what I call a lose-lose. Giant, on the other hand, obviously a mainstream big name, I have no relationship with their head office, and of course the frame was on special. 